Let's take a look at this code. It seems as if there's nothing wrong with it. It's a basic message event listener, which just logs to the console with the nickname of the person who sent this message. So let's go ahead and test this code out on Discord. I'm gonna type the message. And back in our code, we do get our result as expected. Now, JavaScript seems to suggest that our code is perfect, so we're just trusting it. But there is a slight problem here. Let's try to DM our bot with the same message. Now something interesting happens. Our bot basically crashes. If we read the error, we realize, oh, the member property in our code can also be null when a person is sending a message through a DM. So we can go back to our code and we can say if not message dot member, then we can just go ahead and return. And from here, everything is fine and our bot will not crash. But that's where the problem is. We had to first run our code, test the bot by sending a message, and even then it all seemed perfectly fine. It was until we sent a DM to the bot that we realized there's a bug. When using JavaScript, we usually don't give second thoughts to something like this, and that's where TypeScript really helps. Let's take a look at the same code, but in TypeScript. I'll add this console log statement here, and we're already seeing something's wrong with our code. If we hover over it, it's gonna say message.member is possibly null. And that's correct. We saw this earlier when we tried to send a direct message to the bot. But the great thing about TypeScript is you can catch so many bugs like these before you even have to test your application. To fix this, we can do the same thing as we did with our JavaScript code. And we can say if not message.member, then return. And now TypeScript is all happy. This is one of the main reasons why developers use TypeScript. And if you're not already using it, I think you should. I should warn you though, in some cases, TypeScript can introduce its own set of complexities. For me, that's worth it, but you may have a different opinion on this. So let's see how we can set up a Discord.js project with TypeScript. Now I've started off with a blank VS Code project. I just have a .env file and I'm storing my bot token in here. So let's go ahead and set up npm in this directory. We can go ahead and say npm init hyphen y, and we should get a package.json file with all the basic stuff. Now let's go ahead and install all the dependencies that we need. We're first gonna start with a global dependency. This one is going to be TypeScript. So let's say npm install and use the G flag for global and TypeScript. Now, since I'm on Mac, I'm gonna have to put sudo in front, but if you're on Windows, this should work like so. So after TypeScript is installed globally, what we can do is we can go ahead and install discord.js and .env for this project right here. So I'm going to say npm install discord.js and .env. Now we also need some dev dependencies, which is going to make development so much easier. So I'm going to say npm install and hyphen capital D, and this is going to install it as a dev dependency. And we're going to install TSX and we're gonna be using this to run our TypeScript files during development. And we also need types slash node. So hit enter and wait for it to install. Now once this is installed, let's go ahead and configure our package.json. So the first thing that we wanna change here is the main property. I'm gonna set this to dist slash index.js and the dist folder is basically where our transpiled TypeScript code is gonna go. Next, let's go ahead and update our scripts so I'm going to change test to dev and I'm going to change the value for this to TSX watch source index.ts. So let's go ahead and create our source folder. And inside this, we're going to have a TypeScript file called index.ts. Now I'm just going to add a console log statement over here saying hello world and save it for now. And we'll come back to it later. Now let's go ahead and add another script. And this one is going to be build. And we're gonna be running this script every time we want to transpile our TypeScript code down to JavaScript. For this, we're going to be using TSC and you get access to this command when you install TypeScript as a global dependency. Finally, let's go ahead and set the start script, which is going to start the bot from the dist folder. So we're gonna say node dot. And when we say dot, it's basically going to refer to this main. And that's really all we need in our package.json. So let's go ahead and save this and close out of this file. Now we need to go ahead and configure our TypeScript settings. There's actually two ways you can go about this. So the first way is by generating the file using TSC init, and this will create a tsconfig.json file over here, but there's a lot of configuration that you have to do. So if you're not comfortable with these settings, 
I actually have some settings which I recommend. I'm going to have this linked down below in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and paste my TS config like so. And I'm quickly going to go over what these settings mean. So target is basically our target JavaScript code. I'm going to set this to ES2022, but if you have an older version of Node.js, you might have to set this to an older version. Module common JS, but if you're using ESM, feel free to change this. Module resolution is going to be Node. Strict is true. No implicit any is also going to be true, which means we have to manually specify when we're setting the type any. Declaration is going to be false because we don't really need that. Skip lib check is going to be true, so it's not going to go through our node modules. We also have strict null checks set to true and resolve JSON module also set to true. With this, we can import JSON files like we do in our JavaScript. Finally, we have include and exclude. These are pretty self-explanatory. We want TypeScript to include all the files within the source folder and exclude node modules. Oh, and I completely forgot we have to set outdoor to dist. This is basically going to specify where TypeScript is going to put all the transpiled code. In this case, we want it to create a dist folder if one does not already exist and put all the JavaScript files in that folder. So that's our TypeScript configuration. We can go ahead and close out of it. Now let's go ahead and test our TypeScript code. So we have a basic console log here and let's go ahead and test our dev script. So I'm going to say npm run dev. And as you can see, it says hello world. And since we're watching this file, we can go ahead and duplicate this a bunch of times. And this is going to change in real time. So that's awesome. I can go ahead and remove this. Now let's go ahead and test our build command. So I'm going to say npm run build. And this is going to create a new folder called dist with an index.js file. And we just have a console log here, just like we do in our TypeScript file. Finally, the npm run start command is just going to run this JavaScript file. So hitting enter is going to run node dot and we get hello world as expected. Now let's go ahead and set up our discord bot. As I mentioned earlier, I have my token in the dot env file. So let's go ahead and import dot env. Now in TypeScript, even if you are using common JS, you have to use the import export syntax of ESM. So you're going to do something like import dot env slash config. And if we want to import something from Discord JS, it's going to be like import from Discord JS. And from Discord JS, we're going to go ahead and import client. Now let's go ahead and define our client object. So I'm going to say const client equals to a new instance of the client class. We can pass in an object and you can already see the beauty of TypeScript. It's telling us that, well, we're missing some properties. And as it says, intense is missing. So let's go ahead and set intents. And this is going to be an array of all the intents. In this case, our intents is going to be guilds, guild messages, guild members, and maybe message content. Of course, you can set this to whatever you want it to be. Now let's go ahead and set up our ready event listener. So I'm going to say client dot on and the name of the event is ready. And once again, you can see TypeScript telling us that our code is not complete. It expects another argument, which is going to be a callback function. And in this, we have access to the client object. So we can go ahead and console log C dot user dot username is online. Finally, we can go ahead and log into our bot using client.login process.env.token. So we can save this file and let's try to run our dev script. So I'm going to say npm run dev. And after some time in the terminal, we're going to see not under control is online. And our bot is going to run as if we're just running it using node. However, you don't want to run TypeScript code directly during production because that may have a performance impact. So what you want to do is transpile it down to JavaScript as we did before. So let's say npm run build and let's keep an eye on this index.js. So I'm going to say npm run build. And now you can see that we have some code that looks a little bit messy, but this is basically the transpiled code. You don't have to worry about this because TypeScript handles it all for you. All you have to do is just run this code. So we can test it out by saying npm run start. And as you can see, it runs perfectly just as we expect it to. So that's how you set up a Discord.js project with TypeScript. Let me know what you want to see next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.